Hello and welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever 2. In this episode, we're going to work on connecting up every city on the map. So, when I say that, I don't necessarily mean that every city is going to be connected by a bus route or anything, but I want them to all be connected by roads, at least. So we can see here, like, these four cities here, Akron, Garden, Grove, Santa Clara, and Cedar Rapids are connected. However, they aren't connected to Lexington or Tucson at all by roads. So that means any private transport in here cannot go between any of these towns. So that's going to be our goal, as well as uh, we are going to add a train line that goes from Akron to Garden Grove to Santa Clara to Cedar Rapids because there is a bit of demand for it if you look at the destinations layer here. And then this is also a good way to see what cities are connected and which ones aren't. Because you can see this blue line here connects these cities, but there's nothing that connects these or these over here. So there's only a few of these sort of isolated networks. So it won't be too bad to connect them all up, but doing this will greatly improve uh, passenger transport in the area. So first of all, let's get started with our passenger network. So we'll start building a train station This one we will plop right sort of in the middle of town here. We'll give it two tracks because in the future we might use this more. So we need one there. We need another one in Garden Grove which we delete that road and just simply add one of these stations we can be all connected up there and then we just need another station here which by the looks of it might go on that street there. That's not really the best spot for it. Actually, let's make, let's make this a diagonal road. That'll just help out with planning in the future. And then we'll just place that right there. And then all we need is our last train station, which we will put right about here. So these aren't ideal placements. The terrain gives us quite a bit of difficulty with all these mountains, but that's just part of the fun because it makes all of this planning very difficult. So now all we have to do now is connect them up with tracks.
Okay, so here's the completed train track. It connects all four of these towns. This project was very expensive and very time consuming. As you could see throughout the time lapse, this probably cost us about 40 to 50 million due to all the underground track and going through mountains, as you can see here. And then as well as bridges over valleys such as over here by Cedar Rapids. And then we come down to an end of the line here. Hopefully in time, this project will pay for itself as this is much needed infrastructure connecting these towns. And this will prove important in connecting to other networks in the future. Now the next thing we need to do is add in the train depot. So we're going to place it right about here. This is pretty close to the middle of the line. It's pretty flat. So all we have to do is just connect it up and then we can figure out what kind of train we want running on this line. So after contemplating our options for a little bit, I think the best option we have is to go with this Russian class S train and then throw three of these six axle passenger cars behind it. Um, this gives us a good mix of top speed and power which I believe will be very important for this line due to the many elevation changes. So now all we have to do is just wait for our money to fill up and then we can buy this train. Alright so now that we can buy this train Let's throw it on a new line. So this line's gonna start out in Akron, head up to Garden Grove, over to Santa Clara, and then all the way down to Cedar Rapids. So now we just have to go back to Santa Clara, and then back to Garden Grove, and then the loop is complete. Here's a good look of our new train as it starts its way down the line. You can see it gets up to speed pretty quick. However, this is all downhill. As it heads to Cedar Rapids, which is probably our lowest station in terms of elevation. So one thing that I'm gonna monitor real quick is see its performance across the line, just to make sure that it's able to get up to speed when going up these big hills. So unfortunately, as we can see, the train only gets up to about 46, 47 miles an hour as it comes into Santa Clara. But I believe this is the only spot where speed is an issue as the rest of these cities are roughly around the same elevation. 
So hopefully this train will be able to get up to max speed running between the rest of the towns. Now already as this train comes into Akron, we already have passengers waiting. It's only two, but it's a start for now as it establishes connections between these cities. So hopefully pretty soon we'll start to see more passengers rolling in. However, for us to help get that along quicker, we're going to need to create bus loops in all of these towns. So I'm just going to quickly go around through each town and create small bus loops that go through all of them just to help facilitate passenger traffic. All right, now that's every city on this passenger line connected up with buses. So that should help with our passengers. And if we look at Akron, we already have 35 waiting. And at our other stations, we already have a ton of people starting to line up waiting to be moved. And as you can see, the finances haven't quite caught up with our train yet, but it is increasing slowly. Um, once this train starts running at full capacity between each stop, I believe we will start to see it turn a massive profit. So now going into the destinations layer, here we can see that the private tra traffic going between these towns is still there, but it is decreasing, and so eventually the hope is that we can move all of that transportation from the roads onto the trains between the towns. So now we have those four towns all connected up to each other. It's time for us to start connecting those towns up to some of the existing road networks that are on this map, uh, such as the ones up by Tucson and Lexington, as well as connecting down here by Green Bay. So we're just gonna simply place some roads so that private tra transport can start traveling between these towns and helping the towns grow. So now we're just quickly putting in a road that connects to Green Bay. The terrain's a bit difficult here because I just want to avoid tunnels and bridges, but sometimes we can't avoid it. But with a few twisty roads and short segments, we can connect it up pretty well. And now it's time to build the road that connects over to towards Lexington. So this is a pretty quick road. There's just a short segment between the two industries that we can just place a road and that connects them up. So now all of those towns are connected up to the ones by the river. And hopefully that means once demand starts to build up between these towns, we could extend the train line and connect it up somewhere along there and then we can have all of those towns connected by passenger trains. However, that'll be all for this episode. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments or feedback, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.